Manchester United won, West Ham United nil, and yes, people, I know this episode has been a little long time coming, but yeah, man, me and Cappy, we had to re-watch that game on Sunday, you know, get everything filmed that we are now, patterning the thing, because we did have work on Saturday and Sunday on the weekends, so you know, the grind don't stop. Never put everything back into this channel in the end of the day and our Twitch. So follow us on all socials at CM22ENT. Follow us on Twitch, CM22ENT. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and just keep on supporting. Like, share the videos to everybody that you know. Share these twins to another dimension. But yeah, man. A dramatic late winner from Marcus Rashford. Provided by Edinson Cavani. And to me, it was that one piece of quality that we were dying out for man mm. oh man obviously i was looking on my phone at work and i was on my break and i was like what saw so the time of the win i was like that's crazy um my first assumption was that i'm not sure if this is going to be a good performance but then i heard other people speak about it and i heard a lot of positive things so when we watched the match we were pleasantly surprised by the way Manchester United played, by the way Manchester United approached the game just with their aggressiveness, the intensity of the team for most of the game was what I was impressed with. These guys from start, you usually see it at the start, they're bombing, they're trying to you know, get, some, get the crowd going and then they filter out. Manchester United for most of the game, they did filter out in parts, mm. but they always picked it up at the times that they needed to. And you know, I was really impressed with the fitness of the players, the organization of the pressing, the way we pressed as a team, and really forced West Ham into some mistakes. And even that, it can get into a player's head psychologically. And that's why, you know, later in the game, you start seeing West Ham players make certain mistakes, uh, just unforced errors. Exactly. So, this is how we need to play as a team. We need to start getting in the headspace of our opponents, making sure that we're giving them no time to play football. That is how we're gonna win, and especially at home, because that gets the crowd going. You heard the roars, you heard the applause, you just heard the joy in the voices of the fans today. Eh, well, except for one moment, but I'm sure Cappy will touch on that later. <laughs> but yeah, you, sure, you heard the joy in the fans' voices today, and it was just pleasing. Even me, Cappy, we enjoyed to watch the game today. And that was probably a first time in ages. Usually, 100%. it's almost like a chore watching Manchester United. 100%. Uh, but today, pleasantly surprised, we enjoyed the game. Now, I want to mention our defence. Uh, two centre-backs, Varane, you know, calmness personified. But Harry Maguire today, returning to the squad, captain, of course. You know, a lot of eyes are going to be on him. You know, he's one of the squad players that everybody's watching. You know, his, his mistakes are elevated to a certain extent just because of who he is, his price tag and, and what the general consensus of fans think about Harry Maguire himself. Mm -hmm. and I thought today you have to give credit to him and his performance was very solid. There were a few challenges that he looked very confident in making, especially in that first half. He made quite a few of those challenges where he was like, he was assured of his ability to win back the ball. And that is the Harry Maguire that we brought in the first place. We don't want to be seeing that, you know, the Harry Maguire with a lack of confidence that is almost scared to attack a ball. Because we know what he can be. He can be a physically dominant player. We know his, his, uh, you know his mistakes that he makes sometimes, weaknesses. we know his weaknesses, but we know that as a player he can be dominant in the air on the ground and if he's confident that only makes us a better team and adds to our depth. So I have to give credit to Harry Maguire. I did like the performance of the fullback so also back and forth with Diogo Dalo and Alex Tellez. I love to see them pushed up a little higher up the pitch. The only nitpick with their performance is their quality of crossing. Yeah. Now, these guys, they don't hesitate to put crosses in and at times their delivery can be great. But today, the crosses were poor and it wasn't just there. Sometimes it's a matter of just looking up, 
finding a person, being calm about it and picking it out. Sometimes you don't have people in, enough people in the box. Sometimes we do. But and this was probably a thing for with the whole team, not just the fullbacks. Their quality of crossing, everybody's quality of crossing, just the final ball in general until the goal was poor. And that's mm. something we have to improve in. And I think that final goal, it showed one thing. We need to create more efficient chances. Everybody will say, tapping, boom, but we'll take it, right? 100. We will take it. It's all nice scoring these long range goals, but when you're attempting more long range goals rather than trying to work the ball into the box, mm -hmm. drag players of the opposition out of position, then that's a problem because then you're taking more less or low efficiency shots rather than high efficiency shots. And that's our problem. We can't create those chances. So over this break, maybe the players do some studying. Maybe Ralph Rangnick does some study and watches some games over, works out how we can do that. Maybe by playing the extra pass, maybe by having some more forward movement. Like I say all the time, dragging players out of position so that another person can fill that void. And then we got overloads, create overloads and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully we can get better at that over time. I'm hoping that we do. But yeah, it's a positive win. And like I said, with the defensive moments, you know, there, there were shaky times. Shaky moments, of course, but we didn't concede as much chances, in my opinion, as we did against Brentford. And that was the positive. That David De Gea finally gets his clean sheet. He didn't have a as busy night. You know, as expected, probably. So shout out to him, and he still made you know a couple decent saves in in crucial moments. So big up to David de Gea once again. But we pulled through, and like I said, we defended as a unit. We we really played as a team today, and those are the developments that I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. The way everybody's playing as a team, we're playing more organized, and for that. We look a better starting eleven because of that. We look yeah. a better team overall because of that. We exactly. look together. Whereas before we looked disjointed. And that's what mm -hmm. we can't do, you know? Um Let me see. I'm just looking at my notes, seeing what else I can say. I would say we, you know, in games, especially previous games, we'd arrive almost too late. So we start well and then we filter off and we play poorly for the majority of the game. And then when we realise that we needed to go for that goal, we'd arrive too late. Mm -hmm. This game, we were constantly, constantly afraid. And you know, West Ham, credit to them, they were bombing forward too, going on a counter attack, but we were a constant threat, which is why I thought we deserved the win and we deserved that goal. Because if we didn't, you know, continue to push, continue to push for that goal, get crosses in, have nice patterns of play, you know, get passes forward, create some chances. Then I would have said, you know what? We, we got played off the park like in our previous games and we didn't deserve it, but I thought we deserved the win nonetheless. So look, I'm impressed with the way we controlled the game. There were still sloppy moments, like with West Ham also, where we were giving away our passes, unforced errors basically, or, you know, we took too long to pass the ball. Sometimes we pass the ball too quickly and lack the composure in the final delivery. Yeah, Those are the things we need to work on in becoming a better team. Obviously, defensively, there is a way to go. In the midfield, there is a way to go. We looked a lot better and we look a lot more dynamic in the formation we're playing right now. But there is still a way to go in terms of the quality of passing, the quality of that final ball and chance creation. I'm, I'm pleased with the victory. It's a big, big, big victory going into the international break because we all know how bad it can feel when you're, you know, you've just lost the game and then you go into an international break and have to wait a week or two just to find a piece of redemption. Oh, we, we know. know, especially Ooh. from this season. So it's good to go into that. Um, we jump into the top four, obviously, teams have games in hand, but, but, and, and it is a big but, there is still a chance, uh, I'm not 100% positive that we'll reach the top four, 
based on you know the other teams that are there but at the same time we we're seeing teams like Tottenham slip up we beat West Ham who are contenders there Arsenal slipping up heavily so it's all about making the most of the opposition's errors your rivals errors everybody who you're competing with you need to make the most of that take advantage of it and just focus on yourself go game by game and make sure that you're getting the result by the final whistle I'm not gonna lie, even though I was watching that goal behind because I purposely didn't look on my phone to see no highlights. That final second goal got me gassed. It got me so gassed because it was like, man, we needed it. This was the first time that I've seen this team, at least this season, push to the very end, fight for something that they know is theirs to grab. You know, like top four right now because of this result, it's possible. It's a big ask, but it's mm. possible. Big ask. And we still have a chance and we can go into this international break, grow in confidence, train some more, study some more, become more knowledgeable on the system that we're playing, how to play it, become fitter, become stronger mentally and physically. This is what it's all about. Yeah, first of all, I want to mention the impact of the substitutions. Edison Cavani, Anthony Martial, Marcus Rashford. Now, Rashford is the first to come on and his impact came obviously with the goal. I want to speak about Anthony Martial, yeah, and, and Edison Cavani, those guys. Anthony Martial, yeah, he comes on, he provides that quality. You can see his quality on the ball. He's a bit rusty. Same with Cavani as well. They combined and provided that bit of quality that we needed to win that game all game everything me and cm were, were screaming out was where and who is gonna provide this moment of quality that we needed you know who is gonna provide it and in the end it was you know rashford cavani martial even ronaldo was involved at a certain extent but even him throughout the game just just didn't have that final pass right he didn't have that final finish you know mm. and that's fair enough but i'm happy this is what substitutions are supposed to do they're supposed to come in impact the game strongly and almost put the other team on the back foot and that's what we did we exploited the tired legs of west ham and this is why it's good to play start as you mean to finish because we started with high level in, of intensity we started with that and we finished with it. With those substitutions, they helped us to almost find our second and third legs and guan, 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 guan. And then the fans, they got energized, they roared, they, they, they cheered us on, they, they cheered the players on, they almost gave them the power. And that final roar from the crowd when we scored that goal, and then not just that, when the VAR check is complete, just just summed up the moment for us how big that could be for this season not just in the premier league but in the competitions that the champions league that we're you know we're still there to play in against atletico madrid the fa cup where we're gonna play middlesbrough on the 4th of february and could advance you know to almost win that competition i'm hoping still a long you never way. know about the champions league either maybe it's wishful thinking but i'ma do that it's possible but listen, 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 <laughs> listen, 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 come on CM man, where's your hype, where's your hype, we just watched through that, saw the last minute go, saw the vibes of the fans, everybody, we had vibes, nah, nah, you see this, this, this brother's putting on a front man, this guy was gassed, you was there jumping up and down, like a mad man go, you up. know what I mean, shut up man, they're acting up for the camera, shut up, yeah man there, but look, in all seriousness, this is all about character building, team building. We need to be able to go into this international break and come out of it a better team, a much better team. With better mentalities, um, um, better physicals, better everything. Better quality of passing, better chance creation. 
Is that a big ask? Yes. But for Manchester United Football Club, you have to expect the highest of levels for everybody who's playing. Yeah. And I will do no less. So it's all about building that confidence on and continuing once that international break is over. Once these guys are rejuvenated and ready to go again. We need to learn. We need to adapt for every opponent because everybody is different. Everybody will give us a different challenge. Can we live up to those expectations? Can we live up and really take the challenge to the other team? Because that's what I saw today at home against West Ham. This is how we should be playing at home. And this is how we should be playing at some away games also. Not this conservative football, not this fearful football because the other team has threats. We have threats too, so why don't we show that from the start? And why don't we be more consistent with that energy? Mm -hmm. Listen people, we got Middlesbrough on the 4th of February, first game back from the international break. I think the FA Cup is a competition that we should be trying to go on to win at the end of the season. We'll speak about the Champions League another time when that moment comes. But right now, let's focus on the FA Cup. Let's enjoy the international break. Enjoy that rest. If you like this video, please drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Follow us on all socials at CM22ENT. Follow, give a, give a follow on Twitch as well, CM22ENT. We play FIFA, we play Football Manager over there. We might even try to start playing GTA, but we see we'll keep it sports related for now. But listen, please, share these twins to another dimension. Why am I speaking in third person? I don't know. Share us to another dimension. Sometimes I can act a fool, but you know I speak back, CM. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you lots in the bit. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, everything free, no need for a criminal, mind control, all subliminal, Twitter, TikTok, Insta, digital, join this crew, follow my Twitch and I might rate you, if you pass through ends in this my gang, bust down doors or phase right through.